Hello, my name is Andre. I'm a network support engineer for F5 Networks. And on this session, we'll be speaking about Big IP virtual servers. This is part of our basic troubleshooting videos. And as a small introduction, um, this is the content. Um, we won't be speaking very much in depth because this is part of our basic troubleshooting uh, sessions. Uh, I would like to share some stuff with you. Um, what is a virtual server? How does it work? I've created the virtual and it's not working as expected. How can I troubleshoot? Uh, there's obviously a lot of different scenarios to cover. I'm going to cover the, just a few examples, the most common ones, and we're not going to go very much in detail, but we're going to speak about interesting things. So we'll have virtual servers overview, virtual server types, TCP connection setup for virtual server types, uh, profiles, how can they influence a behavior, a virtual servers, then small troubleshooting section, resources, and a summary. So what is a virtual server? It's important to understand that the big IP is a default deny device. What, what does this mean? It means that any ingress traffic arriving at the box, it will be dropped unless there is a listener of some kind. This is quite important to understand. Something needs to process traffic that is arriving. The virtual server is the most common type of listener, and the one that has more flexibility and allows more customization. So a virtual server will always behave differently according to two things. One, the type of virtual server, which you're going to go in depth a bit later, and the profiles attached to the virtual server. A small example here, traffic arrives at the big IP. We're going to send it somewhere. A bunch of profiles that you can have on the big IP that will differentiate what we'll do with the traffic. Return, we send it to the client. Virtual server types. A standard virtual server is the most common one. It's um, we have more specific virtual servers that do more specific things. The standard is the one that does everything pretty much. So you can you can. It's it's a, a virtual server that does not do something that the others do. This sounds a bit confusing. I know we will get to there once we see the others. So a forwarding layer two, for example, it's a virtual server that shares the same IP address as a node in an associated VLAN. Forwarding IP is a virtual server that will forward the packet directly to the destination IP. So it will consult, consult the routing table and it will just simply forward the packets to the actual destination IP that ingress. Performance HTTP is a virtual server that allows you to associate a fast HTTP profile to fast process HTTP traffic. And a performance layer four is a virtual server that is optimizes the, if you just need to manipulate layer four traffic and you don't care about any layers above layer four, this is the best one because it is the fastest. A stateless, it's um, it's mainly for UDP, but it's only for UDP traffic, and it allows you to uh, send the connections without putting on the connection table. So it's kind of like a router, but only for UDP. So it it receives a packet, it sends it, and it doesn't care. Doesn't it's not stateful basically. And we also have a reject virtual server. It just as the name says, just rejects any traffic destined for that IP. And the HTTP, we will relay the HTTP messages on different IP networks. And we also have the internal one. That is one that can send traffic to an intermediary server for specialized processing before the standard virtual server sends traffic to its final destination. So as I was saying before, the standard is the most common because all the other ones are really specific to do something. And the standard is a more global one and it's the most used. So if you don't want to do something really specific, then you should choose the standard one. 
Now, this is very interesting because for each different type of virtual servers, there's different types of connections as well. We're going to go over with the first one, the standard virtual server. So a client sends a SIN packet to us, we reply ourselves, so the big IP replies with the SIN ACK, we receive the ACK. Now the TCP handshake is complete, it's time for the pool member to be chosen by the LTM. We start a SIN packet, we send a SIN packet to initiate a connection to the pool member, we receive the SIN ACK, we send the ACK. Now we receive data from the client and we're going to forward it to the server to the pool member now this one is similar but now this one has a layer 7 functionality so in this scenario it's a the same as before we have a tcp profile but with a http so what would happen same as before since in ACK between the client and the big ip now the handshake is completed but we don't start straight away with the pool member we want to see a get request and if we like it, if there's nothing wrong with a GET request, if it's RFC compliant, we send the ACK. And now we choose a pool member to initiate the TCP connection. Since in ACK, and we send the GET request that we get from the client, we send it to the pool member. Performance layer four, this is, as I said before, this is the fastest type if you just care about layer four processing. We receive the scene and we send the scene somewhere. So we, we send it to the node. We receive the scene ACK from the pool member and we forward to the client. We receive the ACK from the client, we forward to the pool member. So this is just for layer four processing. This is a performance HTTP virtual with an idle server-side flow. This one is quite interesting. So we establish an idle server-side flow by opening TCP connection to the pool member. So we are not yet receiving anything from the client, but we open the three-way handshake, as you can see, with a pool member. We just leave it there. And when the client initiates a connection, then we, we exchange Cincinnati with the client. The client sends us the HTTP request, and straight away, we send the HTTP request because we already have a TCP connection open. We don't have to wait. That's why we are fast, we, we do it quite fast. This is the same, but without any server side flow being idle. So since in ACK, ACK we open the with the server side to the pool member since in ACK, ACK, and then we receive the get request from the client and we forward straight away. This is a layer two virtual server. We receive the scene from the client. We will pass the scene to the nodes in the associated VLAN based only on the layer two address, on the MAC address. So we're gonna send the scene, preserving the IP packet, the IP addressing, but only changing the layer two addressing. We receive the scene act, we send the scene act back, give the act, send the data, we send the data as well. This is similar, but we change the IP. So um, before we were sending on the associated VLAN, this one, we will look at the routing table and we will actually send it to the same destination. We, we will pass it to the destination IP address. So the same packet arrives, we evaluate the packet for processing, we look at the destination IP on the routing table and we send it there. We receive the CNAC, we send the ACK, client data, this is a forwarding IP layer three virtual server. It's quite important to understand the difference between all of them. And we have the reject, very straightforward. We receive a scene and we just terminate the connection. Speaking about profiles, profiles are quite important to understand because they will affect the behavior of certain types of network traffic. Um, for example, uh, TCP parameters such as the Nagel algorithm, if you want the selective acknowledgements, window scaling, etc. These can all be modified to change the network behavior. For example, um, imagine that you have a virtual server with a TCP profile and also a client SSL profile. So the virtual server, when it finishes doing the three way handshake, it expects to see also an SSL client hello. Right? because it has an SSL profile. 
So if, for example, on this kind of scenario, you would see the, the three-way handshake being completed and then you see a GET request, something is wrong because the client is sending a straight away and encrypted uh, GET request, which is not what we would expect. So the profiles will change the behavior or the expected behavior of the virtual server. This is a short list. There's many, many other profiles. This is a short list of what you can have, TCP, UDP, DNS, HTTP, SSL, FTP, SIP, and many, many more. Troubleshooting. TCP dump is your best friend. Uh, we'll go shortly over it. First of all, can you actually ping the virtual server, the virtual IP? If you cannot ping, well, there are usually two things that are wrong. So when you create a virtual server, you also create a virtual address. By default, this virtual address will reply to ICMP and ARP. So it's not expected, but maybe it's disabled. So if you go to local traffic, if you go to your GUI, local traffic, virtual servers, virtual address, you select the one you want to check and check if ICMP echo and ARP are enabled. If they are and you still can ping, very likely it's a routing problem. So you should check your routing. When I mention TCP dump is because you can actually check. So if you start a TCP dump, which is a packet trace on the big IP pointing to the virtual server IP and you are pinging from somewhere, it's important to check. Are we receiving the pings? Very likely no, if you have these um, options here above enabled, but double check, very straightforward. We will give you some examples shortly and how to do a packet trace. So this one is first example. This is a very common case that we have. First notice the colors, you have green and you have gray. Um, here, this is one of my methods um, that I, I wanna share with you. Usually I put colors client side and server side. On here we have green for the client side and gray for the server side. So if you notice carefully, straight away you see on the gray that you see a lot of TCP retransmissions. And if you see, it's always a SIM packet, right? And if you notice carefully, it's always out, out, out. We don't receive a CNAC right, from the server. If you see the green carefully, we do SIN, SINAC, AC, we get the GET request from the client, and then we try to open a SIN uh, TCP connection. There's no reply. Now notice the VLANs, uh, 4094 on the green on the client side and 4093 on the server side. Now, if you notice the, the IPs, if you notice the client IP, it's 10.128.10.128, right? And it's arriving at the virtual server, which has this IP, 10.128.10.80. We do the client part. And then when we open, notice that we are using the exact same IP as the client. So we're not translating anything here, but we're sending it to the pool member. This is already a different IP, right? but we're sending over another VLAN, right? Here we are using, it's, it's the same network segment. Right? I can tell you that it's a slash 24. And here it's another segment, right? So this is likely a routing issue. Unless the server, the, the, here, the dot twenty dot two five three. Res, unless this server has the big IP as a default gateway, for example, or if there's some kind of defined route, this likely will fail. There is a simple solution here, which is to enable SNAT on the big IP. This is a typical one. You can enable source address translation. So we can actually translate the client IP with usually one IP that we have also on the, the pool members segment. This is a simple solution for, and this is a common problem. Example two, this is a straightforward one. You can see straight away, since in a client hello, 
alert. Right? We receive the client hello and straight away we send an alert. When you find something like this, it's important to verify then the client SL profile attached to the virtual server. Right? Why? Because well, a client SL profile has many parameters that you can choose. And here on this scenario, I won't be going much over it, but it, you should, because the big IP straight away after receiving the client hello sends an alert, it means that it speaks SSL, right? Otherwise, it, it wouldn't, it would send a reset or something of the sort, which no, but it sends an alert. So it means that it actually speaks SSL, but it doesn't like something he sees on the client hello. On this particular scenario, I can tell you that the problem is because I have disabled TLS 1.2 on the virtual server and I purposely uh, enforced the client to only use TLS 1.2, so it will fail. But it, it's a good example of, of, of on an SSL connection where you can actually see where the problem is, on which stage of the SSL connection. Another, another example, this one I am sending because we have a really cool feature in the big IP, which is notice that we receive so all green, all client sites, since in ACAC, we receive a get request, we act it, and we send the reset out. We send the reset, and notice here, F5 reset, no pool member available. Now, this is a very straightforward one. The big IP is telling that, hey, I cannot load balance because I have no pool members. So your pool that is associated, unfortunately, very likely all the pool members are marked down by health checks. This one is important because the, the big IP has this functionality, can actually store, or it, every time the big IP sends a reset, it can log why, the reason why. I wanted to just um, show this, and very shortly, we'll understand how this is done. So three important things to remember while troubleshooting. As I said, enable the TCP reset cause. This can be done via this command. This particular one will enable on packet traces, so packets that are captured via TCP dump, right? We'll log the reset cause, as we saw on the previous one. It's important to understand that this, for you to see it, you will need to install the Wireshark F5 plugins. This is on Dev Central. Very shortly, I will share the link for it on how can you download this. It's important to understand as well that starting on Wireshark version 2.6.0, this comes by default, so you don't actually need to install anything. But on previous versions, yes, you do need to install, otherwise you won't be able to see anything. And this one is a simple uh, command, TCP dump, S0, to see the full snap length, so the packets are not cut in the middle. 0.0, .0 to say that on any VLAN, NNN is for the TMM noise. It's not really relevant to explain why, but this will give you a lot of information. And the P is to follow a flow, which is really important because we're going to write with file name, and we're going to specify here a client IP. This is crucial, because when we're running, this is a very straightforward one. If you can reproduce the problem that you're facing from a client machine, for example, if you have a Windows machine and you connect your browser and things fail, you just need to retrieve your, client, your Windows machine client IP and put it here. So host, Windows machine IP, and the P flag is precisely to follow the stream until the pool members and all the way back. This is really useful. Some resources here that are really important, some um, documentation about the packet traces, all we've discussed about the virtual server types, the TCP connection setup, how to log the TCP reset packets, and also the Wireshark plugin. Summary, to wrap up everything, remember that the virtual server is a listener, is a traffic management object on the big IP that is represented by a virtual server, by a virtual IP and a service. Primary purpose is to distribute traffic across a pool of servers. You can assign profiles that will change the behavior of the system. 
There's also different types of virtuals depending on your requirement. Also remember that the TCP connection setup will vary depending on the configured virtual server types. Really importantly, TCP dump is your friend when troubleshooting. At the very least, even if you take a packet trace and you don't really understand what you're seeing, it can point you in the correct direction. Is this a layer two, layer three, layer four issue? Where is it? We got to the end. I hope you like it. This was part of our basic troubleshooting session. sessions. Thank you very much.